Hello everyone! Welcome aboard! I am your host, Gascan. Today we'll be learning how to perform the artillery spotting on the Flug Park. Step 1, we're gonna select the artillery spotter plane, and then we're gonna make sure that it's set up correctly. We don't need any bombs today, but we will need a radio. After that, we can go ahead and set up the plane however you like, whatever gun turrets, whatever machine guns otherwise, whatever skins, fuel loadout, whatever you prefer. Alright, now that our plane is set, let's go ahead and take a look at the mission description and read what we have to accomplish. The mission description has lots of useful information about whatever mission you're trying to accomplish, so make sure you take a good read before you actually start on anything. In this particular case, we need to fly out and make contact with friendly artillery. Then we head over the enemy area to the target area and observe the artillery bombardment and transmit corrections. Once we repeat that four times, the mission will be accomplished. And you can see the area on the map where the friendly artillery is and where the enemy uh, bombardment target is. And now we'll get on our way. As is usually the case with two-seater missions, any enemy interference can cause a failure of the mission, so let's make sure we communicate with our friends and let them know what's going on, try and get any escort if necessary. In this case, I think I'm fairly safe on my own, but we're still going to let people know what's going on. Make sure you send the message to allies with control enter and not let the enemy team know what's going on, otherwise they will come and meet you. Don't forget to uh, lock your gunner seat if you're flying on a public server like this one. Uh, unless you have somebody you know who's going to join you, then let's uh, check to make sure that our plane is working correctly. All of our controls are operating. It's always awkward when you go to take off and find out that your joystick or rudder pedals aren't working. And now we're on our way. Climb up fairly quickly, and then we'll turn east towards the target. Alright, we've reached the front lines, now we need to locate our friendly artillery, and then establish contact with them. And there they are below us. Now we need to make sure that we're at the minimum altitude, 3,600 feet, and then fire a flare. So when we take a look at it, we'll see four artillery pieces and three dugouts, just to confirm that that is in fact the artillery position, double check our altitude, and then fire our flare. Remember, you must be at least 3,600 feet in order to make contact, or you can be higher, but you cannot be lower. And then we'll make sure that we get the message saying that we've made contact. And there it is, let's head to the target area. In this case, it was fairly easy to find the friendly artillery, but if it's over the mud, it can be a little bit harder to spot. Just keep in mind you're looking for those four friendly artillery pieces, as opposed to machine gun nests. You can see that our artillery and target area are just straight across from each other, so it's a straight shot to get to the target area, and we'll take a look at that in just a bit. Now the target is coming in sight. You can see it's the same sort of a thing as our friendly artillery. There are four artillery pieces, and in this case, they are just outside of the mud, making them fairly easy to spot. So keep an eye on it, and we're looking for a message saying that we have reached the target area. And there's the message. We're ready to fire a flare and commence the uh, bombardment. Let the artillery know that we are ready to observe the results. Now they're ready to commence their bombardment, and we'll watch and see what the results are. This will take several minutes, so we'll just circle around and see what happens. If you take a closer look at it, you can confirm that yes, there are four artillery positions there marking our target. Now I haven't personally seen the fall of shot, so it might be modeled, it might not be, but regardless, you just need to stay in the area until it gives you the message that the target has been destroyed or that the corrections are ready to be transmitted. 
As usual with two-seat missions and any flying missions over enemy territory, keep your eyes open for enemy flights that could come and ruin your day. I'll go ahead and leave the uh, entire sequence of uh, time spent over the target area so you can get an idea as to what it's like to stick around for the full four cycles of firing and corrections. Plus there's a few little hidden gems here that you might see to let you know what sorts of things you should keep an eye open for. If an enemy plane shows up and you have to leave the target area, you can always run and come back when you get a chance. There will be a message telling you when you exit the area, and then you can always turn back around and come back in and resume the mission once the enemy has been driven off. But if you see that, then you just need to turn around and head back in and resume the spotting mission and you're good to go. And this cycle of firing is complete. Looks like they've missed. We'll have to transmit some corrections and then do the next bombardment and see if that works. We'll have to repeat this a total of four times in order to accomplish the artillery spotting mission. So it's mostly just circling in the area, firing flares when required. Right, ready for another barrage, fire a flare, and we can commence the next bombardment. And now we've commenced the next bombardment. Always keep your eyes open. There could be enemy planes in the area, there could be friendly planes in the area. Here we've got a flight of four planes that I don't know what they are, but they fired a flare in response to me. There's a good chance that they're friendly. Take a closer look at that. Yep, bent wings, that's an SE-5. There's some friendlies coming overhead. And we're getting a little bit high here, uh, about 4,000, 5,000 feet. Uh, there may or may not be a maximum minimum height maybe 3,000 feet, 1,000 meters, or 9,000 feet, 3,000 meters-ish. Uh, but I haven't met the uh, maximum minimum. So if you do, you should get a message saying that you left the area and you just need to return to the correct altitude. You should be good to go. In this case, I'm just going to descend a little bit back down below the clouds a little bit more.
you'll notice you can still get a pretty good decent distance away from the target and still be considered in the area for the purposes of spotting. So you don't have to stay directly over the target, just close enough. If you leave the target area, it'll give you a message letting you know. So don't worry about it too much, just turn back and keep going. And we missed the target. Time for the next round of corrections. Correction sent, ready for another barrage, fire another flare. It doesn't matter what color flare you fire, just so long as you fire a flare. And now they're firing the next uh, barrage. Oh dear, I bet that got your attention. The nice thing about having an AI tail gunner is that he uh, opens fire on things that you didn't notice, and can give you warning that there's enemy planes that are possibly approaching you. The downside is that he's not very accurate at long range, so you want to be able to set him to close range so that he's more effective in combat, as limited as he is. But it's nice to get a warning that there is something in the area. In this case, I got lucky and the enemy plane did not spot me and I was able to get away and keep up the mission. But if he approached, I could just dive away and then come back later to finish the mission. The AI gunner can be very useful uh, if used appropriately. We'll learn more about that in the trench attack tutorial. was filmed live over an active server, so here you can see some planes and they're heading towards the German balloon. So there's always other people out there. Keep your eyes open when you're flying. Situational awareness is the key to survival. And we missed. Transmitting corrections. Get the 
flare gun ready. Remember, it doesn't matter what color flare you fire, just so long as you fire a flare. And ready for another barrage. Time to fire the next flare. And we're firing the next barrage. Ready to go. Just stay in the target area, stay near there, observe the corrections. shoot, looks like the balloon busters didn't take it out. If the balloon had been destroyed, then it would have reduced the effectiveness of the anti-aircraft artillery in the area, and I wouldn't have as much to worry about from the flak. Looks like those balloon busters are getting involved with something down there. I'll try and avoid that. Whoa, that was close. Definitely time to change course here. And there it is, mission accomplished. The battery has hit the target. Take a look down and you can see that the artillery battery has exploded. Now we can head for home. The map should update. Unfortunately, there's no way to get credit for this in the parser like there is with the recon objective shooting the uh, invisible spotlight. But the mission will still move on to the next objective for you. The mission is accomplished as soon as it gives you that message. In this case, the red note about an objective being destroyed is due to uh, Katori taking out the trench attack target. That is not the artillery bombardment. That is a separate thing, and we'll learn about that in the next video. Until next time, this is Gascan signing out. Good luck out there.